the experience that we have by implementing quality in, in the different organizations. As uh, Setolu was in, indicating, I'm CTO um, of the SIPSA company, and also I'm a TAST product owner. Uh, TAST is a test automation system tool that we have developed in order to introduce the automation within the different organizations. And um, based on this uh, experience, first uh, starting, let's say, improving in the way of doing testing, moving to the automation, and uh, also moving to the digital um, digitalization of the different organizations, uh, we are getting experience and realizing how important is quality, software quality into the organizations. And uh, what we want to do here and what we do today is uh, to share our experience, introducing real cases in order that, uh, yeah, you can see uh, where we are moving uh, with the quality and how important it is into the current organizations uh, in this digital era that uh, we are living. No? So um, just moving uh, into the presentation, uh, I would like uh, to reinforce the importance of quality in this digital era that uh, we are living. The point is that uh, what we can see is that at the moment, the software is the basis for the, the business development. So in the past, um, let's say the software was applied only for specific sections inside the organizations. But the reality is that now the organizations need the software, need the applications in order to sell and generate profit into, uh, and to uh, uh, arrive to the customers uh, and provide services to the customer. Because with the digitalization, especially even af after the pandemic um, uh, we had, the business becomes more and more digital. So every company is at the moment selling their services using software. So if, if the software is the key for, the, for an organization because of, uh, let's say, the sellings and the profit of the company uh, relies on that, how important is quality then, the, the software quality? So the level of the software is needed, the level of software quality, is important uh, for the organization. Because in the end, the customer, every customer from every um, uh, service uh, provided by any organization, it's requesting quality. Uh, because when they buy any, uh, a service, they use a service, they want quality. And the software is there you know, for, for providing that. So therefore, Software quality is really an important or a key topic into the organization nowadays. And now um, it becomes the, the, the point of how to implement the software quality in, in the organizations. So at the moment, this is a, the key question that uh, we see in the, in the market, that uh, many, many organizations um, doesn't know how to implement uh, the quality. And, and, the, and the truth is that they are realizing they have the need of implementing the quality within their organizations. So then uh, we would like to bring into the presentation the, the approach um, that we are following or what uh, we are facing into the different uh, experience that we are having within our customers uh, in SIPSA. So, uh, because at the end we are working in, in all the industries. So we are working for um, European companies, uh, uh, for automotive companies, for uh, uh, the Spanish government. Uh, we are working also for banks and uh, also for insurance companies. So the, the, the need of quality, is distributed in all the industries, no? and it's also distributed in um, high, um, big companies, medium companies, or small companies. Uh, we have different um, type of customers, and all of them 
have the same problem. No? How should I implement the quality or the software quality into my organization? Because my the benefit of my organization depends on how good we are presenting uh, our services, digital services to our customers. No? And, and the answer, uh, or let's say the model that we apply, it's clear. So in the end, the, the quality in the organizations should be implemented top down. So the first uh, person that uh, need to see the, the needs of the software quality into the organization is the CIO, so the, the, the top level. The top level need to understand that the quality is required because based on that, the, the quality area that is built as a, as a team that can support the decisions for, for the top level of the company can really distribute the quality through the organization from top to down. In, in which way? Because of if um, the quality team is, as, is advising the, the top level, this, this advice are going to be taken and are going to be um, moving down to each single um, person belonging into the organization. To start to do the implementation of the quality down top, it's difficult. It's difficult because you, you, we don't have, let's say, as a, a quality area team, the, um, the power, the empowerment enough in order to move the complete, uh, every single um, employee into an organization. But if we come from top to down, then this is possible to do. And, and then considering this as, a, as an initial view, uh, let's go and let's move further in, in the presentation to show how, um, which is the, the concept change that at the moment the organizations are even the heads and, and the CIO and CTOs of the companies are, are realizing. This is based on the experience that we are we, we see. So in the past, the quality was not so important, but uh, because uh, let's say uh, I'm uh, working in quality since uh, since I left the university, so I can really see the difference um, about the importance of quality within the organizations. And in the past, quality was always let's say the the, the quality team was always a team that was usually uh, implemented in big companies mainly. And, but uh, this was not really uh, a key department into the organization. But uh, nowadays, the reality is that the big companies are considering the quality team as a key team for making decisions. And even um, organizations that doesn't have these uh, quality teams are looking for understanding how to implement that because they see they need that. And uh, when the, the different customers are approaching us about uh, how, what should I do uh, with uh, the quality? Um, they, they are telling us the, the reality that they have. No? And they say, okay, I have to handle a um, software project with software project to implement a, a solution, software solution that is not always working but and, and I need that this is working. And, um, and then um, they say, but my standard, let's say department that is doing the project management um, of, the, um, of the projects um, is not covering, yeah, the, they are not able to really achieve quality. They, they can manage, but, but they are not able to, to achieve quality. So, what, what is the key here? <clears throat> and then I think um, to let them know the importance of the quality and that we need to move uh, from this project management to a more quality view of the project. Uh, I usually present this um, uh, general picture 
indicating that in the end, the, the software project of the programs are always measured by three main um, pillars. You know? We have the scope, which is the functionality that we want to cover. We need to consider also the time that is uh, needed in order to implement the solution and, the, and provide the solution to the end customer. And additionally, we need to consider the cost. And this is the standard basic pillars for project management. But what we need to consider is that not only these three pillars are now important, is the intersection of all of them, the one that I'm bringing us, how much quality we are providing to our end customer. Why, why we say the, 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 the middle of, of the picture is the quality? Because you can provide many, many scope, um, many functionality in, in the software, in the application. But what happens if you want to deploy or want to provide this uh, amount of uh, functionality without time? Quality is going to fail because without time to implement the correct functionality, to understand the customers, what are their needs, what are really the functions that they like, and without the needed time, to execute the, 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 the testing activities and so on, you are not going to get that. Or even the cost. What happens if you reduce to the minimum um, and the cost of the project? The, 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 the quality is going to suffer also. So then, uh, in order to be efficient uh, in, in a company, uh, the quality team is not only and doing project management, but this checking, which is the efficient way, considering the three elements, to ensure as much as quality as possible. Because considering quality uh, as a key element for delivery, yeah, we are going to find the balance. And, and, the, and the, the current situation is that the companies doesn't know how to find the balance. Therefore, they need support from quality uh, teams, specialists, that have special skills. And, and um, you <laughs> probably you are going to be with me when we say that the people that is um, living within the quality are living the quality. So they are special skills that uh, are really thinking in quality when they see any, any change any uh, into the project, no? How these changes of how this reduction of costs, the reduction of these decisions that are taken within the project are impacting the quality. And, um, and therefore, it, it's key and important that uh, the current uh, organizations are moving from the PMO, so project management offices, where there is a team just managing projects uh, based on the three variables, uh, scope, time, and cost, to the quality management office. That, that means that the management of the projects uh, is done, not only considering the three variables, but also looking the quality as the efficient, the, the efficient qual, uh, quality when we deliver. And um, to implement that, this uh, quality management office, it's, uh, 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 it's built with specialists in quality. So they are experts in, in quality implementation. They know about testing. They know about the impacts um, when they are able to see the, 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 the solution that is going to be provided. They are self-critical. They are, yeah, if it's an efficient thing because it's looking always uh, uh, for the quality. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and the point is that uh, the experience, or probably you have, you are with me about this, the experience is that the quality teams, the testing teams, are always looking for the uh, maximizing the time to ensure quality. Because uh, yeah, the history was um, making us to be like the last part of the chain. No, in the past, um, by following waterfall um, methodologies, the design of the solution was done. Then becomes the development. The development was always delay, 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 delay. 
and then arrives testing and testing do whatever they want because they don't have time and 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 because they and they want to deliver the solution already to production so in the end the people that was uh, is especially in, in quality they know how to make efficient time and they know how to make efficient the the um, the 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 different um um efforts and the different resources that are within the organizations in order to achieve the quality. Additionally, uh, we are moving into a digital area where everything is moving really fast. And uh, the agile, um, the agility of, of the team need to be clear and need to be spread with, within the organization. Therefore, this uh, QMO should be also an agile, an agile team. Agile team means it's it's able to be adapted to use uh, techniques and to use uh, to use solutions to provide fast feedback to the different teams within the organization. And additionally, this team, this QML, is going to analyze end-to-end -end the organizations based on tools that can provide us real uh, evidences about how the quality is moving into the organization. Um, the quality engineers also are, um, are able to transmit the overview to the decision makers, no? because in the end, the, 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 the top management of an organization need to take decisions uh, in terms of scope, time, and cost. Then, if the quality engineer is there, for providing this view about which are the impacts and which is the best solution, they are going to be able to take more sustainable solutions because of they are going to consider the quality. And uh, in the past, probably they were not um, thinking on that, but when uh, the quality, the QMO um, team is providing this view to them, they are going to take decisions based on quality instead of only in project management pilots, okay? So then <clears throat> thinking in, in this idea or, or in this concept, no? That is, that, that we need to uh, introduce into the organizations uh, a way of managing based on quality and not only in the project uh, skill itself. <clears throat> I, I would like to bring, uh, this is, uh, let's say, our experience, uh, and I would like to share the model that we are implementing in our customers <clears throat> in terms of this type of um, QMO, okay? <clears throat> um, the, the model that uh, we, are, we are implementing is, is based in, in three main concepts. The, the first one is uh, to have a team that is, um, is a central for the complete organizations, and they are specialists in quality. They have quality skills, uh, like we were mentioning before. No? This, uh, they are self-critical. They are able to transfer um, the quality impacts and uh, and to advise the the top level management. <clears throat> okay, and um, and they they also are able to understand. The process of the or the project of the project life cycle, they are um, involved in the testing activities. They know about that. No, this this is a, a central team competency competency center in quality, and and this this team uh, should also uh, consider uh, the, mm, to use end-to-end uh, -end tools an end-to-end -to -end tool framework. What do we mean with that? Uh, in order to provide uh, this clarity to the top management for decisions, uh, it is needed really to have the different projects that are running into the organization, let's say, under control. So to understand which is the status of the project, in which phase they are, where are they facing the problems, where are they facing the risk, no? In, in the past, the management of, of, of this type of projects uh, was done based on uh, PowerPoints. So it, it was based on the feeling of the project responsibles. But these are just feelings. 
and the feelings are not quality. <laughs> um, the quality becomes based on the reality. And the way we have to, to measure the, the quality is based on the activities that are registering into the tools. So now, from, uh, from the beginning till the end, we have tools that are supporting us to monitor or to track, let's say, the requirements, the scope of the projects, to understand which is, uh, which are the activities done by the different teams, the development teams, uh, the different, which are the different de uh, deliveries or releases of the software, and which is the, the quality of these releases. Uh, in terms of uh, how good or bad was the, the release, in how many errors they have, everything, all these things are registered within tools. So um, this QMO area, it's going to have a complete overview about all the different tools that are measuring the projects. And, uh, and, and this is making the possibility that the QA team can really analyze the quality. <clears throat> Uh, of the project and present the truth and the reality, not based in feelings from the project, but really based on what the teams into the organization are really registered. It, it can be that uh, sounds a bit complicated, but the, the truth is that um, every nowadays, all the companies are having tools that are supporting the activities uh, for, the, for every single um, employee of the company. Because now with the, even with the pandemic and with the digitalization, uh, we are working remote and we are doing teleworking. So uh, most of every, every single employee is using, for example, a ticketing tool to register which are the tasks that they have to do uh, for this spring or for this period of time. So out of this, um, tools, it's possible that the quality team can really analyze which is the situation of the company. And finally, we have a third uh, level that is really important for, for the quality team, which is to understand and involve the end users of the organization, the company or the enterprise. Because by understanding the end customer, and this quality team is going to be possible, uh, is going to be able to really understand which are the needs in terms of quality and is going to be able to measure. So uh, this quality team should never forget the end user uh, of the organization because he is going to provide the key uh, and, the, uh, and the real value that need to be considered for because this for them uh, to, to, to buy the services of the organization and the company. So that, that's, uh, this model is uh, what we are, uh, let's say, from our company implementing into the, 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 uh, the different organizations. And I would say this is quite welcome by the organization where we are implementing because they realize that, that in the end, is supporting them. We are pro, uh, this quality team is providing uh, real data. It's not based on feelings uh, and guess, and is always keeping us the most important, the most focused, the 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 needs of the end users. You no, know, that in the end are the customers uh, buying the services and the different products provided by by the organization and the company. So then. Uh, Moving further, this will, I will say is a theoretical model or theoretical uh, concept, uh, but we are implementing that in, as I said, and as I mentioned before, in uh, different industries, different uh, customers, different type of organizations, uh, high, medium, and, and low volume. And I would like to bring uh, a simple and uh, real case as an exercise to share here with you. Yeah, um, in order to yeah to understand why uh, this quality team or uh, this movement from PMO to QMO it's uh, so important nowadays. No, so le let's say we are in we take one of our customers, which is a 
and Spanish government ministry, where we are implementing the quality along the complete uh, digitalization uh, of the project. <clears throat> and uh, they, what they want to do, second, and good with the time, yes. Uh, what they want to do is, okay, they have many, many projects to rise and, uh, and as always, they don't have enough budget. No? So they are looking for a solution to try to provide um, to the end customers um, uh, a functionality, uh, considering the less money. So then they, they say, okay, uh, for this specific area, uh, what we can do is to reuse an application that is uh, already in production and being used by a different government ministry. So we are going to use the same because they are doing the same things, it's the same scope. We are just going to reuse the tool and then we don't need uh, to pay our provider to develop uh, again this solution because the, the other uh, ministry can provide us with this solution. And they say, yeah, that's clear. So we can uh, reduce a lot of time because we don't have to develop, we don't have to test, we don't have to do, Just we just need to implement the solution and um, we reduce cost because we, as in the other time, I don't need to develop anything, I don't need to test and so on. But then this, this customer with this idea came to the, the uh, quality team and then ask us to analyze if this is like that, no? Is this like that? And then the quality team start to think, uh, to think about that, no? How, which are the impacts? Uh, is it really true that uh, we are reducing the cost and the time uh, and we can deliver the same functionality? Is the functionality really the, the functionality that uh, this, uh, in this case, this ministry needs or, or is not completely. No? So the, the team start to analyze. And then um, thinking on that, we do one exercise in order to visualize uh, the, the impact based in a, in a canvas. This testing model canvas uh, that we uh, use or develop was presented in the, in the previous GSDC that I was introducing and is considered as a part of the spherical quality concept. Um, that is, uh, let's say, a model uh, that we have defined in order to try to make it simple and, and to make easy to the organizations to understand the quality and, um, and which are the main, the main elements that need to be considered. By, uh, this spherical quality consists in, in three axes. And one of them is this axis of uh, that we call uh, axis uh, I. And what we do is to try to make like a Kanban that we try to summarize really which are the impacts in terms of the testing activities that are required into the into the shop. So then, uh, with this, uh, take all the time for that, but um, and just go to the to the specific case. But the idea, just explaining the idea, is to visualize the end to end. Since the solution is analyzed, considering which are the elements that we will need in terms of environment and data for testing, which are the type of testing that we need to execute and consider how it's required to do the acceptance of this, and also uh, how the implementation or the rollout of the solution uh, is, is going to be delivered, which is the strategy to be used. No? And also, in, in this view, what we are doing and analyzing is which type of um, framework or an environment we need in terms of tools, processes, and reporting for making into the organization and the understanding of what's going on into this uh, project, or into that implementation. Additionally, that uh, in the low part, we can see and consider and visualize which is the teams or which are the teams that are going to be involved on that process. No? So then by taking this Kanban uh, 
we do like a session, brainstorming session or a design thinking uh, that is um, helping us to analyze this real case situation. No? So we have the case that uh, our ministry want to reuse one application and they are thinking that by taking the application and just implementing in production, everything is done, no? <clears throat> and now quality view came and start to think, okay, let's then think really if this is a good way to deploy quality to our end customers. The first thing that, that we do then is, okay, we reuse the application. Who knows what really the application is doing? Are we going to put in production without knowing what the, uh, the system is doing? Then uh, our customer says, no, no, no. Uh, at least we need to check that the application is working for us and which is the main functionality. So then we are moving them. Okay, we need to test the application first before we do that. And, and for testing that, we need one environment. At least we need a pre-production environment, an environment where we have installed this solution in order that we can test. And for testing, we will need to provide data and prepare data. So we need to review which, which is the type of data that we need to generate, no? And also, uh, we need to understand if there is the, the, the testing activities that were already done by the other ministry in order to check if um, these were complete, which were the main issues identified, if there is still any open issue. So it is needed to, let's say, dedicate some effort in communicating with the, with the other partner in order to receive from them, which is the, the testing activities done for this project and which are the result of them. And based on this analysis, then uh, let's say our uh, organization uh, can consider which, is, which are the additional tests that they want to do. And also uh, from the functional side, and also if it is needed for, for example, for the performance side, as we are going to increase or introduce an, an additional customers, um, in order to validate that the solution is working. Additionally to these testing activities, well, we need to do who is going to do the, the testing activities because uh, as, as mentioned before, the customer thinks, okay, I, I'm not going to spend money. Yeah, the, the point is that you need to look into the organization, someone that is able to uh, uh, do this testing. And for that case, will be will be good to organize a team that is uh, a mix between the quality team and also real business users or end users that can uh, that are going to really use the 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 tool or the application. So um, once we we are implementing the testing activities, it is also needed to think on how we are going to. Um, do the implementation. Are we going to do at once? All the offices that uh, need to, to use this application are going to be uh, starting at the beginning or we want to, let's say, start with an office as a pilot during uh, one month and then to roll out to the rest of the offices progressively. Because then that, that means that the implementation will require more time. No? And, and this is save um, in terms of quality is save, um, saving uh, the possibility to, to introduce errors no? because with the first pilot you will identify issues, you will also uh, identify which is the impact into the end customers uh, and, and the end users of the application. And based on that, yeah, you, you can um, reinforce and adjust the um, the capabilities of the application, considering really the needs for your organization. Uh, additionally to, to that, the complete uh, process need to be monitored no? and need to be, as I mentioned um, before, um, registered in order to take decisions about the different steps. No? So for example, uh, in, in that case, we were using Confluence uh, as a tool for documenting uh, what the application is doing. 
We are using gyra and X-ray to monitor the activities for testing and the test execution and the, um, and the back detection. No? Uh, we are using TAST uh, for running some uh, specific regressions, uh, which are including the functionality that we have uh, selected as the key functionality to validate. And, and even we are using jet method in that case for running the testing, the testing, the system test. So the new dimension and the performance considering that. So in the end, when the QMO uh, team is receiving this idea from the customer that they want to reuse one application and implement into in, in, for our end customers, and this is making us uh, making them to reduce time and reduce cost. It's not so like that, no? Uh, in the end, it, it's clear that uh, you reduce some time and some effort, but you are advising which is the right way to follow in order to ensure the implementation of the solution with quality and avoid um, an end user reaction against the application and the solution. Because you are going to make it progressively and previously tested, understanding what you are delivering to the end customer. So this, this, this will be the, a real case um, that we can select many of them. No, every every day is 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 full of situations that um, um, management or the management is trying uh, or taking decisions, and the quality team is supporting to understand the impact of, of that decision. No? This was a specific case for a big organization that is having really huge impact uh, to end users. But uh, as I said, we have different type of companies and all of them are facing these situations to decide what to do in terms of quality. So then I, I would like just to go through the conclusions and, uh, and just take uh, three main sentences that, uh, that will summarize uh, what uh, I am presenting today. Um, what I am sharing, because I will not like to say that I am presenting, but I am sharing uh, based on our experience. No? So then um, the first uh, thing that uh, we consider for implementing quality is that this need to be done top down. And uh, I will add here that uh, Nowadays, we are facing the situation that the, really the top management and the high level of the organizations are considering software quality teams as the key elements in order to ensure quality and the development of their business in the good direction. <clears throat> uh, our recommendation then as a conclusion is that the organization should move from, a, from the concept PM, PMO that will say, just project management, only thinking in three uh, bases, to a more QMO, that is really project management based on quality, considering the quality and the efficiency on, on quality as the key element for success. And then uh, as a final conclusion, I would like to say that uh, probably um, depending on the area uh, worldwide, uh, there are companies, there are teams, group of organizations of people that are working in models for implementing this quality. And uh, what we want to share is that uh, we um, have identified a model that is helping us to maximize the pro product, um, project uh, productivity by using a central team handling um, the project based on real evidences, um, based on the uh, uh, registering into the tools and standard framework tools in, from the end to end of the project, thinking in the automation as the key element. And finally, considering that the end customer is the, the final or uh, the key element for ensuring quality. For, for, for that reason, it's needed that this QMO, QMO team understand the, the, the end users. And in the case that is possible to involve in the decisions for the quality, involve them in order to share and uh, understand 
really what they think when each one of the different decisions are taken. And um, I think um, that uh, will be all from, from our side today. Um, I will be really glad to, to review your questions and uh, see if uh, we can share our experience and, and uh, solve the, um, the questions that you have. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Inma. It has been a delight listening to your presentation. Uh, we can start with the Q&A now. We have 15 minutes. You can make use of the chat box to leave your questions there, and we can read it out for you. Yep. Okay, here is a question from Aldin. How can a commitment to quality drive innovation and continuous improvement within an organization? So um, for me, it's how to get the commitment uh, is what I say. Um, in the end, we need the top management level involved in quality. If um, they are not open uh, or they are not able to understand the quality, I think the commitment into the organization will not arrive. Uh, the point is that um, this needs to be presented. So the, the situations that we have and the and the impacts uh, that the different decisions uh, that are taken in terms of project management are done uh, need to be present, presented openly to the high level management in order to them understand what we see as quality team. Because we as quality team, we are, we are able to see where uh, the impacts are, but they are not able to see. So what uh, we need to do is really to take the time to prepare um, a way to share to the high level uh, which are the impacts that we foresee. Because when we are convinced and we can transfer that, we will get immediately the commitment from, from the top level. And by taking this commitment uh, from the top level, the organization will give this. If we are not able to achieve to uh, the high level, management to understand really the impact that we foresee, then I think it's really difficult to consider the commitment. So our first step as quality team is to present and transfer in the in a good way, in a way that the, the top level management can understand the impacts. Because when we do this first step and they are able to do it, the commitment for the complete organization uh, is going to be there in terms of quality. I can uh, share, I, I share this based on my experience. So I was, I realized that. And, and uh, the truth is that when you have the time to go there and, uh, and present, they really see the impact. But we always need to present that in the way how this is impacting finally the end users, because the end users are really the key of the quality. And when the top management see that, they, they, they are able to get the, this commitment. 